بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الله وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين uh, As you remember we've been discussing سلة الرحم then under سلة الرحم we started discussing the rights of the parents and the last thing we discussed was about the priority of mother and we said that if you are doing nafila if your mother calls you you break your nafila and answer to your mother but if it's your father and there is not of course if there is something emergency or if he's going to be upset even for father you can break the nafila but it's not as urgent like mother for mother even if it is something simple and you can break this was the last thing we mentioned now we said there are more beautiful hadiths that Ayatollah Jawadi only has mentioned about this issue and we don't want to rush, so we left it for today. One hadith is what Imam Baghir said about a conversation between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Musa, Allah Nabi Alaihi Musa was Kalibullah, and there were occasions that he had honor of having conversation with Allah. He was asking and getting the answer. So, Hadith says, Musa said, قَالَ مُوسَى بْنُ إِمْرَانِ يَا رَبِّ أَوْسَنِي Who is mentioning this Hadith? Imam Baba This is in Amali by Shaykh al-Saduq, Rahmatullah. Amali by Shaykh al-Saduq. You know Amali. Some of you who are maybe new to this concept. Our ulama had this habit of having majlis, and then dictating hadith to their students of hadith. Amal is plural for imla. Imla means to dictate. So, for example, we have Amali of Shaykh Tusi, Amali of Shaykh Saduq, Shaykh Mufid, Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Even, alhamdulillah, it is uh, coming with details. Majlis Awwal. For example, it was a Thursday night in this month, in this year that Shaykh Saduq mentioned this hadith and they were writing down. So Shaykh Saduq in his Amali quotes this hadith from Imam Baqir and Imam Baqir tells us about conversation between Musa and Allah subhanahu wa Musa salam said, Ya Rabbi Awsani Oh Allah, please Give me advice. I advise you to be mindful of me. Mindful of me. Yeah, be. Be means not myself. Because the first thing that we have to observe in our life is our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah himself. Then he said, Ya Rabbi Awsani. Again he said, please give me advice. Qala usika bi thalath. Then Allah again said, I give you this advice that you should be concerned about me. And this was for three times. Then again Musa alayhi salam said, Ya Rabbi Awsani. 
Allah give me advice. Then Allah said, Usika bi ummika. You must be concerned about your mother. Then Musa alayhi salam again said, Ya Rabbi awsani. Oh Allah give me advice. Qala usika bi ummika. So three times Allah gave him wasiya about himself, two times for mother. Then he again asked, and Allah said, Usika be abika. Now I advise you to observe your father. Then Imam Bakr alayhi salam says, This is why it is said that. Two-third of birr, kindness, is for mother, one-third for father. Means mother twice. Of course, maybe this is for Musa because he had very special mother. But it seems also to be general because uh, the ending doesn't say mother of Musa. It says om, general. So mother has priority. Mother needs more love, more care. But please remember when I say mother deserves more love and more care, it doesn't mean you compromise about your father. It means that you do your best for your father, but when it comes to your mother, you stretch yourself more. Not that you compromise about your father. Some people are very good with their mother. When it comes to father, they are not that good. No, You have to be excellent with your father and try to be better even with your mother. Especially, you must remember, in that society, uh, mothers were not receiving that much of respect. And there was a great need to bring them to balance. Yeah. Imam Raza alayhi salam talks about the rights of mother. Wa'lam anna haqqal um. This is Imam Raza. Because we have Imam Zainul Abidin about mother and father. This is in addition to that. This is Imam Raza alayhi salam. You can find this in Fiqh al-Rida, alayhi salam. Anna haqqa al-um alzamu al-huquq wa awjabuha. Among people, we are not talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not talking about even Messenger of Allah. But among people, the most important right the most compelling right belongs to mother. And um, the right of the mother, alzamul hukuk wa is the most necessary and the most compelling, most the greatest obligation. Why? لَأَنَّهَا حَمَلَتْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْمِلُ أَحَدٌ أَحَدًا Because mother carries her child the way no one carries another person. Inside her body. Inside her heart. Inside her soul. Yeah? If we carry something, we carry it on the surface. But mother carries in the deepest possible sense the child. From her, actually, it comes from herself and then carries the child. وَوَقَتْ بِالسَّمْعِ وَالْبَصَرِ وَجَمِيعِ الْجَوَارِحِ Mother protects the child by listening, 
watching all her organs looks after the child but sometimes we may also look after something for example you know we say a father for example or someone else you know, please look after this baby for an hour yeah or you have a eldest for example elder child say you know look after your brother or sister you know first of all they can never be like mother yeah there are exceptions but i'm generally speaking no one can be like mother yes secondly even if for one hour they take care of the child they feel tired they feel you know someone must come and thank them and appreciate them you know, give them lots of trophies <laughs> because one hour they looked after this child yeah but imam Zas's mother does all these masruratan mustabshiratan but she's very happy she's even the children who are very kind and even if someone carries his old mother on his back they don't enjoy it the maximum is that they are very kind and they don't say anything it's not that they really enjoy for example if you give them a pack of money to carry they are much happier <laughs> than carrying their mother yeah isn't it the maximum is they don't say anything they don't complain but it's not that they are really enjoying this that they are looking for opportunity to carry their mother. They try to keep it to the least, to the minimum, just to be kind. But mother is not like this. Mother takes all this pain happily and joyfully. And I think this is one of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that we have received so much love from our mothers or, or other mothers. We can see mothers. But... This also actually helps us to have a glimpse of Allah's love. Had it not been because of our experience about our parents, maybe we were not able to imagine how much Allah then is loving. Yeah? You remember in the months of Ramadan, some years back I mentioned this story, actually about Musa alayhi salam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Musa to go on top of a, a mount and visit an old lady. So it was night, Musa saw that there is a mother crying. What is the reason why she's crying? She said, I was very old. And my son was tired with me and has brought me from city and put me on the top of this hill so that no one can find me and I cannot also go home and left me here. So you imagine she must be crying because of this. But then she said to Musa alayhi salam, I am crying because by the time he was going back, was dark i don't know what happened to her maybe he has fallen down maybe some animal has had him. this is mother and allah said my love for my servants is much more than this mother so one of the blessings of allah is that mothers and fathers help us have a little glimpse we cannot compare them if you have uh, best mother of the world in the history compared to Allah is nothing but it gives you a glimpse of that so Imam Raza says she did all this masruratan mustabshiratan bithalik she was happy and she was taking this like a bashara for herself فَحَمَلَتْهُ بِمَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْمَكْرُوهِ It was makruh, makkurh. حَمَلَتْهُ كُرْحًا وَبَضَعَتْهُ كُرْحًا Kurh means something which is unpleasant. Pregnancy is not easy. Delivery and after delivery is not easy. لَا يَسْبِرُ عَلَيْ أَحَدٍ No one can be patient with this. وَرَضِيَتْ بِأَنْ تَجُوعَ وَيَشْبَعَ وَلَدُهَا وَتَذْمَعَ وَيَرْوَى وَتَعْرَى وَيَكْتَسِيهِ 
She was happy to be hungry, but the child has something to eat. To be thirsty and the child has water. To be under heat of the sun, but give shadow. Not to have proper dress, but give dress, uh, you know, clothes to the child. فَلْيَكُنَ الشُّكْرُ لَهَا وَالْبِرُّ وَالْرِفْقُ بِهَا عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ ذَلِكُ or قَدْرِ ذَلِكُ So your gratitude to your mother and kindness to your mother and your consideration and moderation means you have very good and considered akhlaq with your mother must be equal to that. Can you do that? Can you reciprocate? But then Imam says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تُطِيقُونَ بِأَدْنَا حَقِّهَا إِلَّا بِعُونِ اللَّهِ But you are not able to do the least to show appreciation to the right of mother, even the least except with Allah's help. You can never do enough. Even the least needs Allah's help so that you can do a little thing. Then about father. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said Ridha rab fi ridha walid Pleasure of Allah lies in the pleasure of father. وَسَخَطُ الرَّبْ فِي سَخَطِ الْوَالِدِ And Allah's anger lies in the anger of the father. This is warning, but at the same time, this is a bashara for people who are able to please their parents, because this means that Allah is pleased with you. Because we wonder how we can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are so many things that we have to observe, and we sometimes forget, sometimes we, uh, you know, maybe not patient, yeah? You, it's very difficult for someone to say, even if you ask a great mujtahid, are you aware of all your wajibat at this point? You never forget them, you never, you know, for example, lose, uh, I don't know, attention. They would say, no, we try, we try. We try to do our best. But if you try your best, but you have pleasure of father, pleasure of mother, Allah is pleased with you. Just do your best and please your parents. Allah is pleased with you. Imam Raza alayhi salam also said about father. Alayka bita'atil ab wa birrahi. You must obey your father and be kind to your father. Wa tawadu' wa khudu' والإعظام والإكرام You know, even مرجع تقليد If he goes and visits his father and father says, you know, stay with me one more day. This مرجع تقليد has to listen his father. And one of our teachers, you know, it was a mujtahir that it's very famous. You know, he had gone to see his father in Tehran, and father, you know, asked him to stay, so he had to stay. Like, unless a haram is involved, that's another issue. But if it is, for example, you know, I have to go, I have to open shop, you know, no. If father says you have to stay, you have to stay. You are king, you are president, you are merger, whatever you are. When it comes to father, you have to listen. So be humble, respect your father. In the presence of father, lower your voice. Even don't speak with the same tone as your father, let alone raising your voice over the tone of your father or shouting at father. فَإِنَّ الْأَبَا أَصْلُ الْإِبْنِ Father is the root of the child. The same Imam Raza who talks about mother like that also talks about father. So people should not, you know, take one side and forget the other. 
لأن الأباء أصل الابن والابن فرعه father is the root and son is or child is the branch فرع means branch لو لا لم يكن يقدره الله had not father existed child would not have been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أبذلوا لهم الأموال والجاه والنفس for your fathers give your money give your honor give your life your respect is more important than respect of your father your father's respect is more important Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam also says similar things. Amma haqqu abik fa ta'lama annahu aswuka wa annaka far'uhu. The right of your father is to know that he is your root and you are the branch. Any branch who disconnects himself from the root, what happens? Wa annaka lawla lam takun. Had you not been there, you were not there. فَمَهْمَا رَأَيْتَ فِي نَفْسِكَ مِمَّا يُعْجِبُكَ Whatever you see in yourself that you are happy with. Yeah? Is there, there is anything good in you that you are happy with? فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ أَبَاكَ أَسْلُ النِّعْمَةَ عَلَيْكَ Must know that your father is the root of it. Maybe he didn't give you this. But the root is father. وَحْمَدِ اللَّهُ وَشْكُرْهُ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ ذَلِكَ And praise Allah and thank Allah proportionate to that. Then Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli says, this does not mean that the father or mother have the right to do zulm to their children. Yeah? They should also appreciate the respect that Allah wants for them. They should not do zulm. But the question is, what should I do if they do zulm to me? First of all, are you sure they are doing zulm to you? Because many times our judgments can be one-sided. Yeah? If you say, you know, to your child not to go to a bad place, he may think, you know, you are doing zulm. Everyone else is there. You are depriving me from my rights. I have to be free. Why you are doing zulm to me? So sometimes people think they are being oppressed. But if it's really zulm, there are two sides. Father and mother have no right to do zulm to their children. But if it happens that they do zulm, what do you do? Still, you have to keep the respect for them. And you have to be clever to find a way to look after your rights but not compromise about their rights. Not that you go for the easiest option and that is to start Attacking them or distancing yourself from them, boycotting them. No. You have to be patient. You have to find a way. Maybe sometimes father and mother ask me for different things, conflicting things. What should I do? I take one side and fight the other one? Can I take the side of my mother against my father or side of my father against my mother? Even if you know one is doing zulm, you have to be clever and you have to ask Allah for guidance. Oh Allah, how can I keep the respect for the one who is zalim? I cannot respect him and at the same time be with mazlum. You cannot shout at one party because he's doing zulm to the other party. It's very difficult. Very, very difficult. 
Or if, for example, they are against your wife or husband, or I don't know, anything, maybe they are doing zol. Neither you can compromise about the rights of your wife or family, nor you can compromise about their respect. You have to work hard to understand what's the best way to meet all the rights here. And ask Allah for help. Don't quickly say, okay, this is right, the other party is wrong, and I have no responsibility towards them. No. This is a very difficult situation. Let me read for you one hadith which is really moving. And since I read this hadith some years back, I never forget. Hadith is this. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Man nadara ila abawai. Whoever looks at his or her parents. Nadara ma qitin. With anger. You know, like looking when you are unhappy with someone, you look different. When you are happy, you look different, yeah? But, yes. So if you look at them with anger, not that you look at them with anger because today you are angry. This is very bad, of course. If you are angry with other people, why you are angry with your parents? <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes when we are angry, then every person, we will be showing our anger to them. I go to home or I'm angry from outside, I show to my family. Or I'm angry from home, I go outside, I show to people. I had an accident on the way to the office. Then people who come to the office, I am angry at them. What is their fault? Every person deserves your full respect and attention. If you have millions of problems, this is not his fault. But it's very difficult for us to keep these things separate. Unfortunately, we don't have control over our behavior. We have to learn. Mu'min has to have full control. But this question is more than that. It's not that you are looking at them with anger because someone else has made you angry. No. They have done zulm to, who? to you. Can be something more clear than this? Your father, mother have done zulm to you. And now because of that, you don't say anything. You don't do anything. Just look at them with anger. Yeah, not that you shout at them, not that you know you physically do something. You don't throw anything. You just look at them with anger. What happens? Lam yaqbalillahu lahu salat. Allah would not accept his salat. They are zalim. They have done zulm to him. You cannot look at them with anger. If you cannot control this much yourself, so what is servitude? If you cannot control you, yourself with respect to your parents, how can you then control your behavior in the society? As soon as someone makes you angry, then you react. This is a good practice. Learn how to be respectful to your parents in all circumstances so that when you go outside, then you can have a measured behavior. Plus, these are not ordinary people. These are like your second lords after Allah. These are your lords. May Allah help us, inshallah, to observe all these things. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Iyyakum wa uquqal walidain. Be very careful about uquqal walidain. What is uquq? Ayatullah Jawadi Amuri says, uquq means doing zulm, injustice, and annoying your parents, if you do zulm to them, if you annoy them, this is okuk. 
we can also have a book of children. If parents do zulm to their children, that is also possible. They should not do zulm to their children. But even if, God forbids, they do zulm, this doesn't give us right to react with zulm or anger. So, Ima, uh, uh, sorry, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Iyakum wa uquqal walidayn. Be very careful not to suffer uquqal walidayn, not to go through this. Why? فَإِنَّ الْرِيحَ الْجَنَّةِ تُوْجَدُ مِنْ مَسِيرَةِ أَلْفِ عَامٍ Fragrance of heaven, this is beautiful. Fragrance of heaven is not surrounded within the walls of heaven. Fragrance of heaven can be smelled from 1,000 year distance. Means if someone is going to travel 1,000 years, you know, today we have this concept of, you know, optical year or whatever, solid nuriya for light. So, if someone is going to travel for 1,000 years, or if the smell was going to travel, I don't know, maybe both of them, still they could smell the fragrance of heaven. It means that fragrance of heaven is so much that would not be, uh, you know, confined. With. But the one who is aqul walidin, not only cannot go to heaven, Cannot be even 1,000 years away from heaven. Because cannot understand the smell of heaven. فَإِنَّ رِيحَ الْجَنَّةِ تُوْجَدُ مِنْ مَسِيرَةِ أَلْفِ عَامٍ وَلَا يَجِدُهَا آقٌ The one who is آق would not smell the fragrance of heaven. وَلَا قَاتِئُ الرَّحِمٍ The one who has disconnected the kinship, قَاتِئُ الرَّحِمٍ, they also cannot. What happens if someone does not observe respect for the parents? In addition to the anger of Allah and punishment in the hereafter, it would also cause problems in dunya for that person. For example, would cause loss, would cause decrease. Hadith says, this is Imam Hadi alayhi salam. al uququ yu'aqibu al-qillah. Uquq, aqul walid, if you become aqul walidain, leads to qillah. Qillah means to have little. Means your money, your tawfiq, your life will be reduced. Wa yu'addi ila dhillah. If you become aqib al if you don't show respect to your father or mother, then don't expect you would be treated with respect. You mm -hmm. will be going through humiliation. This is the law of this world. You cannot avoid it. There is a hadith of Qudsi. Divine saying. Allah said, according to this hadith of Qudsi, بِعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي وَارْتِفَاعِ مَكَانِي By my dignity and glory and high position. Allah swears. لَوْ أَنَّ الْآقَ لِوَالِدَيْهِ يَعْمَلْ بِأَعْمَالِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ جَمِيعًا If آقَ الْوَالِدَيْنِ does all the a'mal of 124,000 prophets. Lam aqbal hamin. I don't accept them. Make your father or mother angry and go for hajj, for ziyara. For, what is happening here? What are you doing? Go and Ask them to forgive you, please. Yeah. 
Also, Aqul Walidain causes du'as to be blocked. Hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, among the sins, one is Aqul Walidain, allati taruddu du'a wa tudhlimu al-hawa Aqul Walidain. Those sins that doesn't let dua to rise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Would reject your dua. Your dua will be sent back. And also would darken hawa, the atmosphere. Causes darkness. Is uqoqul walid. And now finally, we refer to parts of dua of Imam Zayn al-Abidin for walid. Such a beautiful dua for walidin, for parents. <coughs> I mentioned some of it. This is dua number 24, supplication 24 in Sahif Sajjadiyah for your parents. It starts with salawat. As you know, Imam Zainul Abidin salam often begins passages of dua paragraphs with salawat and ends with salawat like to I makarum al-akhlaq, for example. So, Allahumma salla ala muhammadin abdika wa rasulika wa ahli baytih al-tahirin wa khsushum bi afdal salawatika wa rahmatika wa barakatika wa salamika. So, he first ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send salutations to the Prophet and his family, his household. Of course, for him, this has two sides. One is Salawat once is also dua for his parents. Yes. Then he says, "Vaxusillahumma walidayya bil karamat ladaik wa salat mink." Oh Allah, please give, especially your salutations and honor to my parents. Then he says, Allahumma salla ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad wa alhimni ilma ma yajibu lahuma alayya ilham. Oh Allah, please inspire me to understand what I must do for them. Imam is asking Allah to inspire him to know what is obligatory, what are the rights of parents that he must do. Because every day can be different, yeah? There are different scenarios in life. You have to know what right now is your duty. Please bring all the knowledge for understanding what I should do together. After knowing what happens, okay, now I know. Suppose I understood. Then please use me to do what you have inspired me to understand. So help me understand what I should do for them and then use me in this way. Means help me to carry out this. He continues and then he reaches this point. Allahumma ja'alni ahabuhuma haybata sultan al-asuf. Oh Allah, please help me to fear them like a tyrant king. How much people have fear of a tyrant king? But at the same time, wa abarruhuma but at the same time, help me to be very kind to them like a very affectionate mother. You know, so when it comes to respect, I should have so much respect that a person who has fear of the king would respect the king. You know, if you are, you know, dealing with king, you are, you are very careful about the way you look at the king, the way you speak. But at the same time, with love, this is not fear which is from hatred. This is fear from respect with love. 
وجعل طاعتی لوالدیه و بری بهما اقر لعینی من رقدت الوسنا You know, when you are very tired, when you are very tired, and you know, for example, you are driving, you know, and one hour you have to drive, but you are very tired, sleepy, but you have to reach the station, you know. When you reach somewhere that you can sleep, how much pleasure is there? It's very tired, and now you can. Imam Sajjad says, Oh Allah, please make me feel when I obey my parents, Better than a very sleepy person when he enjoys his sleep. Give me pleasure in obeying them. If someone is very thirsty in hot weather and has a cool drink, gets pleasure. Make me feel when, my, when I obey my parents better than that person. Who is very thirsty and has cool drink. So that I prefer their convenience, their desire over my desire. Very beautiful. Another thing which Imam says, unfortunately time is short. I have to be fast. So I mentioned the concepts. Another thing that Imam says is, if they have done something for me, Please help me to do estekthar. What does it mean? It means to count it great. You know, this is an akhlaq of mu'min, akhlaq of people who are grateful. If someone does a little for them, they think it's great. People who are not grateful, if you do a lot for them, they always underestimate. So Imam Zain al says, help me to count a lot, whatever you div, they have done for me. Yeah? And whatever I have done for them, to count it little. If you, for example, unfortunately, this can happen. If you have a child, 20 years you looked after this child. Not if, now, if in two months he gives you some money. How much you are taking from me? What have you done for me? <laughs> 20 years <laughs> you looked after him. Now for two months has helped you with money. We have to do the opposite. If your father or mother have not done anything, which is impossible. Let's suppose you have not done anything for you. Just, you know, a little. Always you have to thank them. Always you have to appreciate. And if you all your life have supported them, you must say, this is nothing. I have not done anything. So Imam Zain al says, help me to have this approach. Please help me to have humble voice with them. Make my word, my speech very pleasant when I talk to them. Make my heart very soft with them. Allahumma, beautiful. Allahumma shkur lahuma tarbiyati. Oh Allah, I cannot thank them. Please you thank them for my tarbiyah. I don't know if anyone in the history has uh, talked so beautifully about parents. Imam Zain al very beautifully. You please thank them for my tarbiyah. Wa athib huma ala takrimati. You reward them for honoring me. When I was very young, very, you know, little, they protected me. They preserved my honor. There are things that parents know if other people knew, you know, they would not have the same respect for us. They did everything to protect us physically, spiritually, I don't know, our reputation. So you please also protect them. And then, Allahumma, wa ma massahuma minni min adha. 
او خلص الیهما عنی من مکروه او ضاع قبلی لهما من حق او الله if it has happened that I have annoyed them or something disliked unpleasant has reached them from me or I have overlooked some responsibility towards them please make this compensation for their sins if I have had some shortcomings some mistakes please drop their sins because of this and raise their rank because of this and increase their hasanat then he says ya mubaddil as-sayyi'at bi-adhafiha min al-hasanat uh, those uh, who watched uh, my talks about mercy of God, I say there are four levels of maghfira. The highest level of maghfira is what? Tabdeel al-sayyat bil hasanat. It's last uh, part of God's mercy, understand God's mercy, lecture eight. So we have maghfira, we have takfir al-sayyat, mahfu sayyat, tabdeel al-sayyat bil hasanat. Allah transforms bad deeds to good deeds. And Imam Zainul Abidin says, here, in the same way that Allah multiplies hasanat, He also multiplies hasanat which are after transformation of sins. Yes? So, you made one bad action, sayya'ah. You should be punished for that, for example, or be forgiven. But not only Allah would not punish you, He's not just also forgiving you. He may transform sayya to hasana. But then multiplies that. So one sayya becomes several hasanas. Ya mubaddila sayyaat bi adhaafiha min al hasanat. Oh, the one who transforms bad deeds into multifold, multiplied good deeds. So if I have done anything wrong to my parents, if I have failed to do my wajibat, please, you transform my bad deeds into good deeds and put in their account compensation for their sins, increasing their degrees, and increasing their hasanat. But if they have done something bad to me, now the next part. اللهم وما تعدي علي فيه من قول أو أسرف علي فيه من فعل أو ضيعه لي من حق أو قصر بي عنه من واجب. Oh Allah, if they have done some zulm to me in words, they have said things to me that broke my heart. They have said things about me to other people which were not true. Yeah, if they have done in their word some ta'addi, some aggression towards me. Or in their action they did israf, they went out of the boundaries. Or they did tazi, uh, they wasted, they disregarded my haq. Or there were some wajibat, they had, for example, they had to give me good tarbiya, they had to, I don't know, to help me with marriage, whatever. There were some wajibat that they should have helped with that. If they have not done these things. فَقَدْ وَحَبْتُهُ لَهُمْ I have forgiven, I have gifted them all these things. So if there is anything that I have right over them and they didn't observe, I have forgiven and I want to show my generosity to them with this and please I request you not salamik
not only please forgive my parents for anything that they didn't observe about my rights, not only forgive them for their sins, not only don't punish them for that, also if there is any tabi'ah, you know tabi'ah, tabi'ah, any sin causes some burden. And sometimes these burdens are different from azab. Yeah, burden of the sin can be azab, can be more than azab. Sometimes you are forgiven. But the burden remains with you in dunya and akhirah. It causes lots of obstacles for you, problem in you. This is the tabi'ah. Yeah? For example, if na'uzu billah, na'uzu billah, I anger, make my mother angry, my father angry, and I ask them to forgive, you know, and they really forgive me. Do you think it can easily be undone, undo? You know, you can do it, undo it? No. The burden remains, the darkness remains, the blockage remains. Unless you pray a lot, and Allah may come and help you. So, Imam Zainul Abidin says, please remove any tabi'ah if their bad actions have caused them. فَإِنِّي لَا أَتَّهِمُمَا أَلَا نَفْسِي I never accuse my parents and charge them with some shortcomings. I don't say my parents have done anything wrong or, you know, failed to do anything. This is sign of mu'min. وَلَا أَسْتَبْتِئُهُمَا فِي بِرِّي And I never say they were late and slow in being kind to me. Not only I don't say they didn't do their wajib. I even don't say they were slow. Sometimes because I say, you know, my mother always fed us, but after two hours, you know, we were hungry, was feeding us. No, I don't say this. And I don't dislike the way they looked after me. I don't say they were not best. They were not proper in their behavior. فَهُمَا أَوْجَبُ حَقًّا عَلَيَّ وَأَغْدَمُ إِحْسَانًا إِلَيَّ وَأَعْظَمُ مِنَّةً لَدَيَّ مِنْ أَنْ أُقَاسِمَهُمَا They are much more higher than me trying to do retaliation and say, you know, they didn't do this, so now they have to come to justice, you know, I, or at least I am going to complain to Allah about them. So where is then their long years of taking care of me? How can I forget that? And then he says, فَصَلَّ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَآلِهِ وَأَعِنِّي يَا خَيْرَ مَنْ أَسْتَعِينُ بِهِ Please help me. The best person that I can ask for help is Allah. Please help me. To do my duties towards my parents. وَوَفِقْنِي Please give me tawfiq, make me successful. يَا أَحْدَى مَنْ رُعْبَ إِلَيْهِ The best person to guide when people go to someone for help. وَلَا تَجْعَلْنِي مِنْ أَحْلِ الْأُقُوقِ لِلْآبَاءِ وَالْأُمَّهَ Please don't make me one of the people who have uquq of walidain. يَوْمَ تُجْزَى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَثَبَتْ لَهُمْ لَا The day that every soul will be uh, judged and they would receive their reward and punishment without any zulm. Please, in that day, don't include me among the people who are registered as Aqul Walidain. Please give my parents the best things you give to the parents of your parents. Believing servants. And this is also very beautiful. All of it is beautiful. Allahumma la tunsini dhikrahuma fi adbar salawat. Oh Allah, please don't let me forget to remember them after my salat. You do salatul fai, salatul zur, salatul as, maghrib, isha. After that you must remember your parents and pray for them. Imam Zainab, they say, oh Allah, don't make me forget remembering my parents 
after my salat. Wafi. And in every moment of my night, in the night when you wake up for tahajjud, for anything, remember your parents and pray for them. Wafi kulla sa'atin min sa'atin nahari. And also every uh, hour or every portion of time during the day. So it means that day and night you must pray for your parents. This is the key for your success. Don't underestimate this. This is the key for your success. It brings rahma to you. Then Imam says, "Waghfir li bi du'a'i lahuma." Please forgive me because of my prayer for them. You pray for them, you will be forgiven. And also, please forgive them because of their kindness to me. So my dua for them works more for me. Therefore, I say, please forgive me because of my dua for them and forgive them because of taking care of me. So they have already a lot because they have been kind to me. Please be pleased with them because of me. And then Imam salam continues and he says, O oh Allah, if you forgive them first, please make them my shafi. If, if my parents are better, so... They are already people of heaven. You have judged for them to go to heaven on the day of judgment. Make them my shafi. But if your maghfara comes to me first, make me shafi for them. Why? So that with your love, we all get together. I want to be with my parents on the day of judgment in heaven. And with my whole family, of course. This is very beautiful du'a. This is du'a number 24 in Sahifa Sajjadiyah for parents. One final point. We want to finish this discussion about parents. Then, inshallah, we go to family. You know, I mean, rest of the... Uh, your love and kindness to parents should continue even after they die. It's not enough that when they were uh, present, they were living, you were kind, and now you forget them. No. This is the last point. Imam Raza alayhi salam says, Alayka bita'at al-ab wa birrahi. And then he says, Wa ba'd al-mawt bid-du'a'i lahum wa tarahum alayhim. You must be obeying your parents, your father, kind to your father. And after death, Pray for them and ask Allah to send rahmah to them. Say rahmatullah alayhi, for example. Because it has been narrated, man barra abahu fi hayate. If someone has been kind to his father when his father was alive. But lam yad'u lahu ba'da wafate. After father passed away, didn't pray for him. Sammahullahu aqa. You become aq. If your father dies, you must not forget him. He is now in more need. In dunya, you were helping him in a worldly sense. Now you have to pray for him to do some good things for him. Imam Baghir salam said, "Inna al-abdalla yakunu baran bivaladayhe fi hayatihim." Sometimes a servant of Allah is kind to his parents when they are alive. Thumma yamutan, then they die. Fala yaghzi anhum adain. Parents die, they have some debts. The child doesn't clear the debts of the parents. He was very kind with them. But now that they have died, they have debts, he doesn't clear. And also doesn't ask Allah to forgive them. Now he will be registered as Aqul Walidin. You cannot say it was death of my father. You have to clear for your father. So, in this session and previous session, Alhamdulillah, we talked about the rights of the parents, but the general uh, theme for us is 
سلة الرحم and إن شاء الله we continue with the rest of family members إن شاء الله in the next session our next session إن شاء الله would be third of January um, I need your du'as because I'm traveling إن شاء الله I need your du'as may Allah إن شاء الله سبحانه وتعالى bless all the parents who are alive with health with dignity with success with prosperity and make them pleased with us and those who have passed away may Allah inshallah forgive them may Allah accept their hasanat may Allah increase their hasanat may Allah raise their rank may Allah respect them with Muhammad and Allah Muhammad may Allah make them pleased with us and may Allah inshallah bring all of us together inshallah with our parents and for parents with Ahlul Bayt inshallah on the day of judgment alhamdulillah rabbil alamin Also, the brothers and sisters who are watching us uh, live, so may Allah inshallah bless you and bless your parents and remember us your dua and hope inshallah to connect again on the 3rd of January inshallah 2020. Thank you very much.